starting with the liver now first we will discuss about the anatomy of the liver now liver it is the largest internal organ of the body and it is divided into two lobes right and left lobe by an imaginary line which passes through the left of ivc to the left of gallbladder fossa and this imaginary line it is called as cantley's line so first liver it is the largest internal organ of the body now if we see the anatomy it is divided into two row lobes right lobe and left lobe by an imaginary line which passes through the left of gallbladder this is gallbladder and left of ivc so this is ivc and this is termed as cantley's line so we have cantley's line so this is right lobe and we have left lobe now this right lobe it contains it contains right hepatic artery then we have a right branch of portal vein and right hepatic duct so right lobe contains right hepatic artery then we have right branch of portal vein and right hepatic duct whereas left lobe contains left hepatic artery then we have left branch of portal vein and left hepatic duct clear okay next let us discuss the various fissures of the liver so next is fissures of the liver now we have three major fissures of the liver and three minor fissures of the liver the three major fissures in, it includes the main portal fissure the right portal fissure and left portal fissure so let us discuss it with the help of a diagram so if this is the liver now this is the main portal fissure in the middle this is right portal fissure and this is left portal fissure now this right portal fissure it contains right hepatic vein so through right portal fissure right hepatic vein runs through left portal fissure we have left hepatic vein and through this main portal fissure we have middle hepatic vein so middle hepatic vein it passes through the main portal fissure right hepatic vein it passes through the right portal fissure and left hepatic vein it passes through the left portal fissure after that these fissures they are also called as intersectoral planes so these fissures they are also called as intersectoral planes or you can call it sisura clear so these intersectoral planes these divide the liver into four sectors so if you see the diagram we have four sectors this is this is the first second third and fourth sector 
so this is number first is a right posterior sector right posterior sector then number second is right anterior sector so number third is left medial sector and number fourth we have left lateral sector so according to this we have four sectors we have right posterior sector right anterior sector then left medial sector and left lateral sector so we can remember it if you see you can remember it with the help of mnemonic p a m l so this is p a m l so this is sectoral classification of the liver clear now if you see this right posterior sector it contains segment 6 and segment 7 after this this right anterior sector it contains segment 5 and segment 8 this left medial sector it contains segment 3 and segment 4 of the liver and left lateral sector it contains segment 2 only clear okay next let us discuss the segmental anatomy of the liver now we will discuss the segmental anatomy of the liver Now let us discuss it with the help of a diagram. Suppose this is liver. Now this is middle, this is right portal fissure. We have middle portal fissure and left portal fissure. After this, Quinod divided liver into eight segments. And these eight segments were on the basis of distribution of portal vein and hepatic veins. So, Quinault divided liver into eight segments on the basis of distribution of the branches of hepatic veins and portal veins. And these eight segments we have this is segment 2, this is segment 3, this is 4A, this is 4B. Then we have, after this we have 5, then 6, 7 and 8. Now if we see the segments 1, 2, 3, 4, they are in the left lobe of the liver. Whereas segments 5, 6, 7 and 8 they form the right lobe of the liver now there is segment 1 which is termed as caudate lobe of the liver now segment 1 segment 1 it is termed as caudate lobe of the liver now recently one more segment it has been termed which is segment 9 and which is basically a subdivision of segment 1 so we have segment 9 also and this segment 9 is basically a recent subdivision of a recent subdivision of segment 1 and what is the location of this segment 9 it lies posterior to segment 8 Now this segment 1 which is also called as caudate lobe, it has some unique features. Let us discuss them one by one. So let us discuss the caudate lobe of the liver. Caudate lobe. Now first is that 
it receives blood supply from both right and left portal pedicles so first feature is that it receives a blood supply from both right and left portal pedicles normally you know that right lobe of the liver it is uh, it receives the blood supply from right branch of portal vein whereas left lobe of the liver it receives from the left branch of portal pedicle so but this caudate lobe it receives the blood from both right and left lobes of the liver after that second important feature is that the bile drains into both a right and left hepatic duct so bile is draining into both right and left hepatic ducts and third important feature is that the venous drainage is directly into the IVC. So third important unique feature is that the venous drainage it is directly into IVC. Clear? Now if we see the anatomy of this caudate lobe it is divided into three portions we have the caudate process, the paracable process and the spigenial lobe. So, if we see this caudate lobe, it has got three portions. This portion, it is termed as caudate process. After this, we have paracable process and this part it is termed as spigel lobe. So these are the three portions of the caudate lobe of the liver.